I was trying to think of what a modern day experience would be like for the prodigal son who went off and squandered his life on a life of dissipation. And we hear from his brother, wasted the property and the money on prostitutes. And as I heard that word, I thought of Pretty Woman. I don't know if you remember that movie back in 1990, but the Broadway show just came through Cleveland. I think it might have a couple more days. But Pretty Woman tells the story of the prostitute. So it tells the story from the prostitute, prostitute's angle of what it is like. And it begins in one of the most seedy places you could find at the time, which was in, in the play they had, they had the Hollywood signs, but from the back. So you're looking at the back of Hollywood. And so it, it took place on the streets of Hollywood and with the whole scene that was going on back at the time with prostitution, drug addiction, alcoholism, all of those uh, things that we think of when we think of dissipation. And when uh, the girl, I don't remember, Vivian, when Vivian, who is played by Julia Roberts, begins to enter into that life of prostitution, she has a friend that coaches her. And her friend tells her a couple important rules. The friend says to her, first rule is, you decide who, you decide where, and you decide when. Nobody tells you what to do. And the second rule was, never kiss him on the mouth. Because if you kiss him on the mouth, you might fall in love with him. That was the second rule. And so we begin to, to kind of enter into this life of this dissipation, you know, where people go that are broken, that they're bottomed out emotionally, physically, spiritually. And then we have the character uh, who is played by Richard Gere in the movie. We have the character that goes down there. He's a millionaire. Um, he's a businessman. And he goes down there on accident. He's lost. And he is asking for directions. And who would be there on the side of the road but pretty woman herself? And so we asked her for directions. And he said, how do I get back up to Hollywood Hills? And she said, well, it cost you five bucks. And he said, five bucks for directions? And she said, yeah, now it's going to cost you 10. And he said, how can you charge me for directions? And she says to him, well, you're lost. I'm not. And she turns around to walk away. And he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll pay you for directions. And then she ends up uh, getting in the car with him to actually drive him there. And if you know the story, you know that the two of them hit it off. And so it turns out to be a weekend where he just pays her primarily for her just to be with him. He just wants somebody to talk to. He wants uh, some kind of companionship. And they spend their time together. And she goes from absolute destitute poverty, like can't pay her rent, to living in the most expensive hotel there is in Hollywood. And not only that, but he tells her, he goes, look, you're going to be with me all week, and so I need you to look good. So he hands her the credit card and he says to her, you go to whatever shop you want and you buy the best things that you can buy and I need you to have enough clothes for a week. And of course she is just coming from the street, she didn't have money for food or her next meal and now she's got this lavish lifestyle that she's in. But she goes out to try to buy, buy clothes and she's rejected by the shop owners. She goes into, into one of the stores um, and she asks, uh, you know, how much is this dress and they say, um, they said, well, that dress isn't for you. It won't fit you. And she goes, I didn't ask if it would fit me. I asked, how much is this dress? And so she looks at the other lady and she says, it's too expensive for you. And actually, we're going to have to ask you to leave. And so she's thrown out of there. And uh, when Richard finds out about this, he takes her on his own. He takes the day off work and he takes her to the finest stores in all of Hollywood, Rodeo Drive, right? Takes her to Rodeo Drive and gets her the finest clothing, the finest wear. Um, there's that classic scene where he gets her the, the diamond necklace, and when he goes to open it, and she goes to touch it, he slaps it shut, and she laughs. She dresses her lavishly, and she, for, for the first time in her life, experiences that there might be another way to live than the way that she's been living. And as the pr movie progresses, you know it's a Disney movie, by the way, so they fall in love with each other, and one night he is sleeping, and after they've just had a good week together, he's fallen asleep, and she looks at him, and she can't stop looking at him, and she breaks the second rule. She kneels over, and she kisses him on the lips. 
It's a Disney princess movie after all. So she kisses him on the lips and, uh, and breaks that rule and finds out that she falls in love with him. And after that, there's some turbulence, some highs and lows, but in the end, uh, he's kind of like the prince that whisks, whisks her off away. That's what she's always desired. In the gospel today, we hear about this prodigal son that goes and squanders everything. So he goes off to a distant land and he squanders everything. He wastes everything that he has in a matter of days or months on prostitution and anything else that he could find at that time, I'm sure, and finds himself totally destitute. And then an interesting phrase in here is he comes to his senses. So he's able to come to his senses and, and realize this is not my life. This is not where I belong. The truth is, we all can be the prodigal son. And maybe at different times of your life, you were more prodigal than other. Maybe as you went through high school or college. And then at some point, God drew, drew you back to himself. But even now in our hearts, we can stray from God. We can go to those distant lands. And that's what this season of Lent is for. It's a time of repentance. It's a time of coming home to the Father. We try to offer a confession numerous times so that everybody has the opportunity to go to confession during Lent so that we can have this homecoming, this return to the Father. Now when the Son comes home and the Father sees him from a long distance, what that means is that the Father's been waiting for his Son to come home this whole time. Every night he probably looked out into the distance for his son, thinking he was probably dead. Maybe you have a prodigal child in your life. Maybe you have a child that is away from you, a child that you might not even know how they are doing. Or maybe you have an estranged family member, a brother or sister, or um, someone that is just unreachable to you. So the father realizes that this son could be dead. So he looks out every night, and one evening he sees his son, and it says, off in the distance. And when he sees to his son, he does something extraordinary. This is an elderly man. He runs to him. So he physically runs to his son because he's so excited, embraces him, wraps, wraps him in his arms, and kisses him. He kisses his son because there is so much love there. And then, before his son can even say anything more, he orders the servants to bring the finest clothes. So just like Pretty Woman, to dress him up as beautiful as he can be. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And slaughter the fattened calf and rejoice because this son of mine was dead. He was lost and has been found. I want to talk about the specialness of this kiss. The God, your Father, who creates you, created you and continues to create you, loves you so much. And in a sense, we hold on to this kiss until our final, ultimate love, who is God, kisses us. And when he kisses us, we experience what it is like to be true love. Marriage is a sacrament. So all of you who are married, you husbands and wives, who are married together and who kiss each other, are sacraments of God's love for us. That God wants to do the same for us. That each and every one of us, he loves and desires to kiss. And so I think it's important just to assess our lives during Lent and think about that. Is there any sin that is happening in our lives that needs to be forgiven? Have we strayed from God at all? Maybe even those watching online, have we not been back to Mass when we know that God is calling us back here? And this could be that time to come to him. Because in confession, we get to experience that intimacy with God. He uses his servants, us priests, to speak the words of absolution. And the laying the hands on you is the sign of God's embrace and the coming down and the kiss of the Holy Spirit. When we sin, we die. 
all of us have sinned in some way. All of us have broken our Father's heart at what we have wasted his grace upon. And so the season of Lent is the opportunity to return to him once more, to experience him running to us, embracing us, kissing us, giving us the finest clothing, a ring on our fingers, sandals on our feet, so that we can no longer be dead, but alive in his grace. So if it's been a while since you've made confession, maybe this is your time. Those watching, if you've been away from the church, maybe this is your time to return to him so that we can all be treated with true dignity as we truly are sons and daughters of Christ.